Well, thank you all so much for joining me. I'm forgiveness teacher from the Ozarks, Willie. And I'm here to share lesson 283 in A Course in Miracles workbook for students here on Tuesday, October the 10th of 2023. We're reading from the original edition. My true identity abides in you. <laughs> Father, I made an image of myself, and it is this I call the Son of God. Yet is creation as it always was, for your creation is unchangeable. Let me not worship idols. Don't, don't worship the image of yourself. Worship God. Worship God. Worship God as he manifests through you and through your brothers and sisters. Let me not worship idols. I am he my father loves. His holiness remains the light of heaven and the love of God. Is not what is beloved of you secure? Is not what is beloved of you secure? Is not the light of heaven infinite? <laughs> is not your son my true identity? When you created everything that is? <laughs> Catch that. Is not your son my true identity when you created everything that is? My true identity abides in you. Now are we one in shared identity with God our Father as our only source and everything created part of us. Again, now are we one in shared identity with God our Father as our only source and everything created part of us. And so we offer blessing to all things, uniting lovingly with all the world, which our forgiveness has made one with us. Catch that? Our forgiveness is what allows us to see that we're one with all that God created, and we're part of all that God created. We are as God created us, and so is everyone. See the Christ in them. That is the part that where God's answer lies. That's the part where, um, where dreams are gone and we see each other the way God created us. My true identity abides in you. In our associated reading, what is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit mediates between illusions and the truth as he must bridge the gap between reality and dreams. Perception leads to knowledge through the grace that God has given him to be his gift to everyone who turns to him for truth. Across the bridge that he provides are dreams all carried to the truth, to be dispelled before the light of knowledge. There are sights and sounds forever laid aside, and where they were perceived before, forgiveness has made possible perception's tranquil end. The goal the Holy Spirit's teaching sets is just this end of dreams. For sights and sounds must be translated from the witnesses of fear to those of love. And when this is entirely accomplished, learning has achieved the only goal it has in truth. For learning as the Holy Spirit guides it to the outcome he perceives for it becomes the means to go beyond itself, to be replaced by the eternal truth. If you but knew how much your father yearns to have you recognize your sinlessness, you would not let his voice appeal in vain nor turn away from his replacement for the fearful images and dreams you made. The Holy Spirit understands the means you made by which you would attain what is forever unattainable. And if you offer them to him, he will employ the means you made for exile to restore your mind to where it truly is at home. From knowledge where he has been placed by God, the Holy Spirit calls to you to let forgiveness rest upon your dreams and be restored to sanity and peace of mind. Without forgiveness will your dreams remain to terrify you, and the memory of all your father's love will not return to signify the end of dreams has come. Accept your father's gift. It is a call from love to love that it be but itself. The Holy Spirit is his gift by which the quietness of heaven is restored 
to God's beloved Son. Would you refuse to take the function of completing God when all He wills is that you be complete? <laughs> My true identity abides in you. Okay, let's go back and look at our text reading. And in chapter 29, we're ready for, um, which is the awakening, we're ready for Roman numeral 7, forgiveness and peace. And while you're turning there, let me uh, tell you a little bit about uh, what on earth is going on today around the world. And let me get my paper. Okay. Um, Add a Lovelace Day. Bonds a Bottler Day. Headspace Day in Australia. Headspace. Mm. Hug a Drummer Day. International Stage Management Day, Motorsports and Memorial Day, National Angel Food Cake Day, National Cake Decorating Day, National Handbag Day, National Hug a Kevin Day, National Love Your Hair Day, National Metric Day, National Shift 10 Day, National Tuxedo Day, National Academy Day, Owner Business Day, Powers of Ten Day, Squid and Cuttlefish Day, World Child Development Day, World Day Against Death Penalty, World Homeless Day, World Hospice and Palliative Care Day, World Mental Health Day, and World Porridge Day. <laughs> and... Uh, and, you know, I used to make a porridge with my kids when they were growing up. I called it Osage Stew because I, I read that the Osage used to mix all the things they had to eat together in a stew. And they would serve it to everyone about 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, mid-morning. Mid and then it was available for anybody to eat throughout the day. And I always thought, that makes a lot of sense. That's practical. Let's do that. <laughs> so I had Osage Stew when my kids were growing up lots. <laughs> Uh, Bob Gordon Elderberry. Uh, let me tell you about Bob Gordon Elderberry out of EdibleLandscaping.com. And uh, the Bob Gordon Elderberry is a native elderberry from Missouri. Berries up to a quarter inch in diameter. It is the leading juice variety. Current commercial cultivation is to cut to the ground in the winter and flowers and fruits are formed on new canes, producing the same season, zones three through nine. That's all the way through the Ozarks here in Missouri. And I may have a Bob Gordon. I'll see if I. I'll see if it's got any. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll see how it looks. I'm not sure it's a Bob Gordon, but I've got a, a native uh, Missouri elderberry growing. I'll, we'll see if we can find it. Okay, let's see, and I've got, um, I'm sitting right here beside my Malabar spinach. Let me just show it to you. You probably can't really see it. It's kind of vine. It's a vine. See how nice? And let me get a big leaf here. I'm just going to pick one. They're, they're pretty good. They're mucilage, but they, you know, kind of when you chew them up, they get a lot of a mucilage, like okra kind of, but, but it's a good taste and uh, steamed or fresh. The Malabar spinach is uh, Bacella alba, is a, a, an edible vine in the family Bacillacea, and it's, uh, it grows as a tropical plant all over in Africa and Asia, and it's used very often as a vegetable. So uh, Malabar spinach. <laughs> so anyway, I just thought I'd... I'm sitting here. It's kind of intertwining with my, uh, with my. Um, oh yeah. As a matter of fact, I showed you just now a. a um, here, let me just break a little of this off and show it to you better. I just showed you a sweet potato leaf, which is also edible. And uh, there is your Malabar spinach right there. There's a little the tip of one of the vines. I've got a nice little crop of them growing right here. Uh, pretty. Pretty nice little patch right here. Let's see if I can show you a little bit more. See? 
Anyway, I don't want to take too much time on that, but I did want to show you since I was sitting right beside it. Okay, let's go take a look now in our text reading. And let's be sure to take with us, my true identity abides in you. And our text reading in chapter 29, Forgiveness and Peace, starting in paragraph 38. How willing are you to forgive your brother? How willing are you to forgive your brother? How much do you desire peace instead of endless strife and misery and pain? How much do you desire peace instead of endless strife and misery and pain? These questions are the same in different forms. Okay, did you catch that? They're the same question. How willing are you to forgive your brother? And how much do you desire peace instead of endless strife and misery and pain? These questions are the same in different form. Forgiveness is your peace, for herein lies the end of separation and the dream of danger and destruction, sin and death, of madness and of murder, grief and loss. This is the sacrifice salvation asks and gladly offers peace instead of this. So... Salvation asks for sacrifice, but that word sacrifice is in quotes because it's really no sacrifice. It's just letting go of what you really don't want, like your identity as a son of God, thinking that you, how did he say it in our lesson this today, that, um, that he says, Father, I made an image of myself, and it is this I call the son of God, yet is creation as it always was for your creation is unchangeable. So, so forgiveness is your peace, for herein lies the end of separation and the dream of danger and destruction, sin and death, of madness and of murder, grief and loss. This is the sacrifice, and we're going to say it jokingly. It's a joke. <laughs> this is the sacrifice. Salvation asks, and gladly offers peace instead of this. I'll tell you what, Jesus has a huge sense of humor. This book just makes me laugh all the time because I realize he's telling us something really, really important and it's completely true. And yet he says it with the most uplifting and humorous way. <laughs> when I grow up, I want to be a comedian like Jesus. Swear not to die, you holy son of God. You make a bargain that you cannot keep. The son of life cannot be killed. <laughs> he is immortal as his father. What he is cannot be changed. He is the only thing in all the universe that must be one. What seems eternal, all will have an end. The stars will disappear and the night and day will be no more. All things that come and go, the tides, the seasons, and the lives of men. All things that change with time and bloom and fade will not return. Where time has set an end is not where the eternal is. God's Son can never change by what men made of Him. He will be as He was and as He is, for time appointed not His destiny, nor set the hour of His birth and death. Forgiveness will not change Him. Yet time waits upon forgiveness, that the things of time may disappear, because they have no use. 40. Nothing survives its purpose. If it be conceived to die, then die it must, unless it does not take this purpose as its own. Change is the only thing that can be made a blessing here, where purpose is not fixed however changeless it appears to be. Think not that you can set a goal unlike God's purpose for you and establish it as changeless and eternal. You can give yourself a purpose that you do not have, but you cannot remove the power to change your mind and see another purpose there. Change is the greatest gift God gave to all that you would make eternal to ensure that only heaven would not pass away. Catch that. Change is the greatest gift God gave to all that you would make eternal to ensure that only heaven would not pass away. 41. 
so we can change our mind basically. And remember, he talked about learning uh, when we when we've reached the gate of heaven, when forgiveness has been made complete, learning has done the only thing it was really intended to do to help us change our mind, to know that we are still as God created us. Paragraph 41. You are not born to die. You cannot change because your function has been fixed by God. All other goals are set in time and change that time might be preserved excepting one. Forgiveness does not aim at keeping time, but at ending when it has no use. For Okay, so all other goals are set in time and change that time might be preserved except one. Forgiveness does not aim at keeping time, but at its ending when it has no use. Its purpose ended, it is gone, and where it once held seeming sway is now restored the function God established for his son in full awareness. Time can set no end to its fulfillment, nor its changelessness. There is no death, because the living share the function their creator gave to them. There is no death. Why? Because the living share the function their creator gave to them. You, you, you were created, created in the image of life, in the image of love, in the image of God. And, and you'll, you're always going to be that, whether you realize it or not, even though you've made an image that can change and needs to change and will change as you begin to practice forgiveness, as you begin to answer this question wholeheartedly, how willing are you to forgive your brother? How much do you desire peace instead of endless strife and misery and pain? For these questions are the same in different form. So, you were not born to die. You cannot change because your function has been fixed by God. All other goals are set in time and change that time might be preserved, excepting one. Forgiveness does not aim at keeping time, but at its ending when it has no use. Its purpose ended, it is gone. And where it once held seeming sway is now restored the function God established for his son in full awareness. Time can set no end to its fulfillment, nor its changelessness. There is no death because the living share the function their creator gave to them. There is no death because the living share the function their creator gave to them. Life's function cannot be to die. It must be life's extension, that it be as one forever and forever without end. And the last paragraph, 42. This world will bind your feet and tie your hands and kill your body only if you think that it was made to crucify God's Son. For even though it was a dream of death, you need not let it stand for this to you. Let this be changed, and nothing in the world but must be changed as well. For nothing here but is defined as what you see it for. How lovely is the world whose purpose is forgiveness of God's Son. How free from fear, how filled with blessing and with happiness. And what a joyous thing it is to dwell a little while in such a happy place. <laughs> Nor can it be forgot in such a world. It is a little while till all timelessness comes quietly to take the place of time. Those three sentences in the middle of that paragraph, let's read them again because this is so important and, and it's so uplifting here. How lovely is the world whose purpose is forgiveness of God's Son. How lovely is the world. If you're not seeing a lovely world, well, then you're still holding an unforgiveness. Let's practice your forgiveness until beauty comes into focus. How lovely is the world whose purpose is forgiveness of God's Son. How free from fear, how filled with blessing and with happiness. And what a joyous thing it is 
to dwell a little while in such a happy place. <laughs> okay, well, let's go take a look at our, our lesson again. My true identity abides in you. Father, I made an image of myself, and it is this I call the Son of God. Yet is creation as it always was, for your creation is unchangeable. Let me not worship idols. I am he my Father loves. His holiness remains the light of heaven and the love of God. Is not what is beloved of you secure? Is not the light of heaven infinite? Is not your Son my true identity? When you created everything that is, my true identity abides in you. Now are we one in shared identity with God our Father as our only source and everything created part of us. And so we offer blessing to all things, uniting lovingly with all the world, which our forgiveness has made one with us. Our forgiveness has made what God created one with us, which is everything. He, it comes into focus and we begin to see it as we begin to keep practicing forgiveness. Keep practicing forgiveness. Remember, how willing are you to forgive your brother? And how much do you desire peace instead of endless strife and misery and pain? These questions are the same in different form. Forgiveness is your peace, for herein lies the end of separation and the dream of danger and destruction, sin and death of madness and of murder, grief and loss. This is the, in quotes, sacrifice. <laughs> Salvation asks and gladly offers peace instead of this. My true identity abides in you. Okay, well... And if you are growing some alabar spinach, they say you can put that in a, a, a vase and it'll sprout roots. You can grow it in the house in the wintertime. I may, may try that. Okay, be sure to do your um, two longer meditations today and uh, throughout the day. Every hour of the day, bring this to your mind. My true identity abides, abides in you. My true identity abides in you. My true identity abides in you. My true identity. Perception leads to knowledge through the grace God has given him. Perception leads to knowledge through the grace that God has given him. To be his gift to everyone who turns to him for truth. Across the bridge that he provides our dreams all carry to the truth to be dispelled before the light of knowledge there are sights and sounds forever laid aside Perception strength will end. Forgiveness has made possible. Perception strength will end. Perception. Perception strength will end. Forgiveness has made possible. 
possible perceptions tranquil end forgiveness has made possible perceptions tranquil end identity abides in you as you do your longer practices periods and even when you do your short ones come to the the altar of truth wholly empty open-minded as to who you are and how you are created in God's image let go of your beliefs that you're mortal and full of fear and forebodings (laughs) let go of all that and be as God created you Practice your forgiveness. My true identity abides in you.